Periodization is largely a distraction to keep lifters occupied while they get bigger. Hey everybody, it's uh, Jason Blaha here. I thought I would chat with you guys and gals a little bit about this today. And uh, let's just call it like it is. When, when it comes to getting people actually stronger, uh, and that includes even guys who are doing progressive overload for the purposes of getting bigger, most of your training really is about getting bigger. Like that is ultimately what makes us stronger. And this has been found uh, to be largely true in, in the lab. When they study elite lifters, when they study elite lifters, you can rank their totals based on a DEXA scan. So you can take 10 competitive strength athletes and take something like their powerlifting totals, their CrossFit totals, all this stuff, right? Their, their big lifts, like their totals from multiple exercises, you can put them into a DEXA scan and rank them based upon what their body looks like under the scan in terms of how they're going to place. Okay, it is literally that simple. Muscle mass relative to your levers and moment arms on any given exercise determines 90% of your strength output. Okay, everything else is only the last 10%. Skill, neural drive, neuromuscular efficiency, your ability to turn on motor units faster. All this other stuff that we focus on is the smallest part of the equation, all of it combined. Muscle equals strength. So usually when you see a really big guy who's not even strong, it's because they're choosing to use lightweight or maybe they have deficient muscles. You have people like, well, how come this really jacked guy barely struggles with a 500 deadlift? It's like maybe he has no glutes and hamstrings because that really jacked guy might have a 405 or a 450 bench. Maybe he can do a strict curl with, uh, you know, he can grab and just barbell curl 200 pounds because that's what you're seeing is those muscles up top, but then his posterior chain is small. Well, relatively small because a 500 deadlift is not super impressive, okay? That's, that's what you're actually seeing. If he actually had massive glutes and hamstrings, he probably would have a big deadlift, but he doesn't. Uh, and so when it comes to this, we need to understand this. So what's the deal with most periodization? It's a distraction. It is literally a distraction coaches come up with to give them more time to get you bigger. Okay, and people say, well, what about all these people? They sell successful periodization programs and they, they have you ramp up through these mesocycles and it's like, yeah, okay, here's what they are doing. They are having you consistently train hard while managing fatigue. I want to be clear. Everything that they are doing is largely about getting you to do quality volume while managing your fatigue. There's nothing magical about their mesocycles. There's nothing magical about their periodization. And I am not the only person out here who says this. There are other really good coaches and experts who, who, who kind of laugh at the whole concept of periodization. I mean, to some extent, Louis Simmons even laughed at it. Okay, and at Westside Barbell, but I've definitely seen great coaches who have backgrounds in sports science who, who also laugh at the idea. Okay, the, the research doesn't even support the idea that, that most periodization even really gets you stronger. Okay, you get stronger by lifting heavy and by getting jacked. That is it. As long as you are continuing to get jacked and getting jacked is a matter of training hard and managing fatigue. Are you doing enough effective reps? Are you working muscles through an effective range of motion? Are you doing so without getting hurt? In other words, you literally can have elite levels of strength by training like a bodybuilder. That will eventually get you there. So we need to be need to be very clear on that. Hey, okay. so usually when you're you're seeing, and then of course lifting heavy. In fact, the fastest way to do this is do heavy singles, and they proved that even at Westside Barbell. Doing two max lifts a week built all the strength they needed to be meat ready most of the time. Max out on an upper lift and a lower lift every week is largely how they trained for decades, and then they just got really really jacked. Now, granted, they did speed work. Speed work is your technique, there's your practice. That's how they, they worked it. But 70% of their training was, was as even Louis Simmons put it, bodybuilding training. His words. Let me state that again. 
they broke all those powerlifting records by doing that. Again, 10% of your work being max is 5 to 10%. The rest speed work for skill. And then 70% of your training being bodybuilding training. That's how he worded it. You see jacked bodybuilders, as soon as they go over and do any heavy power training, what happens? Their maxes become elite. How many pro bodybuilders have you seen who don't even train super heavy? They go spend a phase training heavy and then they can magically bench 500 pounds. Magically squat or deadlift 700 pounds. Real fast, because they're jacked already. So when we're looking at a lot of this periodization, literally all they are doing is distracting you while you grow. In other words, my magical periodization, I'm gonna help you break past your plateaus. Okay? What are they really doing? Having you do quality work, and then doing enough accessories that you're getting bigger. They're getting your quads bigger, your glutes bigger, your pecs, your triceps bigger, whatever you need to get bigger for these lifts, they're giving you extra weeks and months to make them grow. <clears throat> as they grow, as long as you're producing enough neural drive from heavy lifting, which is where a lot of the periodization is, what happens? You get stronger, you PR. I mean, even linear periodization still follows that idea of hypertrophy phases and you peak again. But it's not the periodization doing it. That's, again, making it more complex than it needs to be. You could literally take any of that programming, do tons of hypertrophy work, get super jacked. Okay? Get super jacked. And come in and do some heavy singles and build maxes. Or maybe some triples, maybe some doubles. I do that to peak lifters all the time for, for me. Do some triples and some doubles and some singles over the course of several weeks. Step on the platform, they hit lifetime PRs, okay? Lifetime PRs. Ultimately, periodization is voodoo. It is voodoo and a distraction for the coach to have time to get you bigger. And if the coach doesn't understand that, they don't need to even be coaching. Because they have really bought into some nonsense. They bought into all the voodoo and they're just passing it along, thinking all the voodoo that they're doing and all this brainstorming on the programming is having these magical effects. Well, then, then, they're, then their athletes are really in trouble because the coach doesn't really know what he's doing. It's monkey see, monkey do. Those who understand know the truth. They're just using the neural drive on the heavy stuff and then distracting you long enough to get bigger. And that's it. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.